So you've got this gorgeous Next.js app router site. It's got a couple of pages, it's in production, and it's super fast. Because if we look at the routes table, we can see that every route is static, which means that it's pre-built at build time and then just served out as a static asset. You can't get any faster than that. You can even deploy the site to S3 if we wanted to. Now you get this PR for this project. It looks simple enough. We want to make a slight change to this fetch on this nav bar. So we have a look around. Turns out this nav bar component hits the nav data service. And yeah, well, seems okay. Seems like a simple enough change. Looks good to me. Then, boom. Now the site is running slower and it's costing us more. What's going on? Well, the entire site is now dynamic which means that every request has to be sent to the server or the serverless function to be processed. We're not static anymore. All that is because of one simple change to that fetch call. So how did we get here? Well, all of our routes are in auto mode. If you don't know what the Next.js app router auto mode is or why it exists or how to get out of it or where this routes table comes from, then let's dig in and find out. So weirdly, the best place to start learning about what auto mode in the app router is, is in a pages router application. So let's go take a look at the pages demo. This is an application that is in the GitHub repo that is associated with this video. There's a link to that in the description right down below. There are three routes in here. There's the home route, index.tsx, and then there are dynamic and static routes. So let's go take a look at the build. So when we build this pages demo, down here we'll get our routes table. This is really important. Anytime you build the application, whether it's app router or pages router, you get this awesome routes table and it tells you every single route in your application and whether it is static or dynamic. Now in the pages router, there's two flavors of static pages. They're both indicated with a circle. There's an empty circle. That means that the route is simply static means that it can be generated once and not regenerated. The filled in circle, which we have on our static route, is service side generated. That means that you can actually revalidate and re-update that page later using static site generation. That's also something the app router supports. And then there are dynamic routes symbolized with a little F on it. And those are routes that are handled by the server. So every request goes to the server, is processed, a new page is generated, and then sent back. Now, there's good reasons to be in both of these. Static is incredibly fast and dynamic are for when you have customer-specific data that you want to render out during SSR time. They just have their own benefits and drawbacks. So let's take a look at what triggers being in each one of these modes. So our homepage, which is our basic static route, is just a simple page. There's no data required to actually build this page. So that's why it can simply be rendered once, and that's it. Let's take a look at our static page. Our static page has this get static props function that it exports. And that tells the pages router that at build time, it's going to run this get static props function. That's going to get all this data and then send it to the component as props. So then the component gets invoked, in this case, static page, and then it gets rendered. With a dynamic page, instead of get static props, you have get server side props. And that tells the pages router that at runtime, during the request cycle, it's going to call this get server side props for this route. That's going to get the data and then similarly send that as props to this dynamic page component, which then processes those props and creates the page. Let's go take a look at this actually running. So now that I built it, I can start it. Now I've got our home page. And if I go to our static route, we can say if I hit refresh, neither the server time nor the API time changes. That's because we have created this one page as HTML, and then they're just going to keep sending that back to us over and over and over again. It's, it's static. We go to the dynamic page. We can see that every time we hit refresh, we get a new time on the server, and we also get a new time from our local API service. Now that we know what static and dynamic mean and how they're implemented on the pages router, let's go have a look at exactly the same app, but on the app router and see how it's figuring out which routes are static and which routes are dynamic. And speaking of figuring things out, if you want to figure out the app router the easy way, go over to my course, pronextjs.dev. There are two free tutorials once you sign up, plus tons of free articles and videos, as well as the paid course. It is a fantastic journey through all things professional Next.js. All right, let's go take a look back at our app router application. 
All right, over here in our app router demo, we've got the same thing. We've got the page has exactly the same contents as the other one. And we've got the static and dynamic routes. Now let's go take a look at what the app router has come up with as we build the application. So here's the route table. We've actually built this route table by actually running each one of these components. That's what the build system does. Now the build system needs to do that because in when the routes are static, it needs to actually build it, get the output, and then store it somewhere as the static output. And then during that build, it also figures out that some of those routes are dynamic. So let's go take a look at each one of those routes and see how it figured out whether the routes are static or dynamic. So this is our homepage route. It's exactly the same content as we had in our pages router, except that this is app router. And it figured out that this is static. So how to do that? Well, look to see, is anything being done during this request? Are there any fetches made? Is there any attempt to access anything in the request? No, therefore it is a static route. Now let's go take a look at our static page. So this is a static route. It's a bit more complex. We're doing a fetch here and we're getting some data, but we are actually caching that fetch by default. So that means we can actually just render this page as static once because we are under the assumption that that API time is never going to change. And then finally, we have our dynamic page. So this is our dynamic page. It's almost exactly the same thing, except in this case, we say that we want no cache on the API time. Now, as we build it, the app writer sees the fetch that we're making, sees, oh, that's not cached, and then deduces that we are a dynamic page. And of course, that means that we need to be run on the server in response to any single request because we know that the API time is going to change over time. So let's take a look at these two things side by side. On the left-hand side, we got the app router version of the dynamic page. And on the right-hand side, we got the pages version of the dynamic page. And, the, and then we can see that in the case of the pages router, it's very clear how to deduce what is a dynamic versus a static route, because in this case, get service high props is exported. Whereas in the case of our RSC-based system, well, it's, it's unclear. We haven't indicated to the build system clearly that this is a dynamic route. So it needs to figure that out because by default, the dynamic flag is set to auto. And what auto tells the build system is you need to run that component and try and figure out if you are a static or a dynamic route. We know that in this case, we want this route to be dynamic. So we could also force it to be dynamic. Now, theoretically, we could get rid of this and try again. And now we see on a route table that our dynamic route is, yes, dynamic. But that's because we forced it to be dynamic. If we took out that force dynamic, then it would be static because we've defaulted back to auto mode and we've looked at that fetch and we've seen that it is a cacheable fetch now because we removed that cache, no cache. So let's bring that back that force dynamic and I'll show you a little gotcha when it comes to this. You might be thinking to yourself, cool, all right. Well, now that I've forced it to be dynamic, I no longer need to put the cache, no cache on that fetch. Well, let's try it out. So now we see as we hit refresh, that the API time isn't changing, but the server time is. So that tells me that the server is actually getting each request and updating, but the API time has actually been cached. That's one of the cool things about the app writer is you can actually control that granularity of fetch caching. So in this case, if we look back at the code, that fetch is cached. That means that I can grab it once and retain it. And by default, in Next.js 14, that's the case. In Next.js 15, by default, fetches are not cached. So there is some change in behavior. If you ran this exact same page right now on 15, both of those values would change because the fetch is no longer cached. But in 14, I still need to specify cache no store or cache no cache. Now I built it again with that change and we can see that if we run it again, then both the API time and the server time change because that fetch is no longer cached. All right, now before we talk about how to fix the issue and from the original app, let's talk a little bit more about how to register that a page is dynamic in auto mode. There are a few more things that you can do in auto mode to say that a page is dynamic. You can also access anything on the request. That means you can do headers, next headers or cookies, or if you're in a client component, you can use the search params. Accessing any of those means that your response is going to be request specific and therefore your route is going to be registered as dynamic. All right, let's get rid of those. All right, now let's talk about the original app and the original bug. So here's our app. Let's take a look over our layout to start. Our layout imports our navbar component. Our navbar component gets put at the top of the layout. And you'll notice I'm not exporting a const dynamic anywhere in here. So the layout is auto. And if I take a look at the page, the page is an auto. And now if I look at the navbar, 
Well, we see that we have a cache, no cache. And in auto mode, what does that mean? Well, that means that this route, the page route, the home page route is going to be dynamic. The same thing applies to contact, which doesn't specify dynamic, and also about, which doesn't specify dynamic. So how can we fix this? Well, there's a couple of different things we could do. First, we could take this back off and say that we don't want caching, and then we could just rebuild the app anytime we know that this API nav changes. We could also do tags. We could specify that there are tags associated with this fetch, and then we could revalidate those tags on an API route. That would give us incremental static regeneration. And this actually brings up an interesting question. Does it make sense if I go over here to the layout to specify that the whole layout and the whole app is static? So I can export for static from the layout. I can go back over here to our fetch and make sure that we are not cached. So if this were in auto mode, this would be dynamic. But now that we specified layout, maybe we'll get static. Let's try it. And yep, now if we look at the route table, we see that every route is now static, which is great until we decide that maybe one of our routes is going to be dynamic. So let's create really quickly a dynamic route. It'll bring an example of that time service so we can see the dynamic behavior. Well, now let's build and run it. And now if we navigate to there and hit refresh, we don't see any changes. And if we take a look at our build table, we can see that that dynamic route is marked as static. So why is that? Well, up in the layout, we said that we are forcing static. And therefore, because we didn't specify any dynamic value here to force it to be dynamic, that force static overrode the auto that was defaulted to here. So we can bring back the dynamic behavior by specifying force dynamic. Now build and start again, and now we get a fully dynamic route. So now you understand that this app router auto mode exists, and it's there to figure out whether a route is static or dynamic without being told that it is static or dynamic. But also, if you want to, you can specify for yourself if a route is supposed to be static or dynamic by doing this force dynamic or force static. Now, in this case, is that the right thing to do? Well, let me know in the comments right down below. And in the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.